Hey guys, welcome into Fantasy Football Academy 2020. I am the Dean, and boy, do we have some news to go over since last we spoke. So, last time we were together, Bill O'Brien still had a job. Dwayne Haskins was still the starting quarterback for Washington, and nobody had COVID. Well, past couple of days, here's what's happened. Bill O'Brien out as GM slash coach of the Houston Texans. What does that mean for fantasy? Very simply, it could be a huge positive for the Houston team, any players on Houston. Now, I'm not going to say that Brandon Cooks is looking any better because he's not, so stay off of Brandon Cooks. Will Fuller is probably going to be the receiver that you're going to want in this offense. Also, Deshaun Watson, his horrible performance so far, uh, it's just been so erratic, so unexpected. Um, it, the the amount of rushing yards that he has is not what you expected when you drafted Deshaun Watson in probably about the fifth or sixth round of your draft. So, with that said, take take the uh, the Houston matchup against Jacksonville with a grain of salt. It's going to be a wait and see on because Romeo Cromel is going to be the new interim head coach of the Houston Texans. So, also Dwayne Haskins now with now on the bench. The team has moved away from him so far that Alex Smith. Yes, the comeback is real. The potential is there. Because Kyle Allen, one of the most inaccurate quarterbacks in the league, is now the starter for Washington. Now, what does this mean for fantasy? Very simply, and ironically, this is an upgrade for Antonio Gibson. And we saw that Terry McLaurin is basically going to be quarterback and script proof in Washington. Last week, I told you that I was sitting him, made a mistake, got 22 points on my bench. So, hey, I'm glad Terry proved me wrong. That's my boy. Uh, It was he had a rough matchup going against Baltimore, and that's just one of those things that if you are a fantasy manager, if you're a fantasy owner, uh, you look at your squad and you go, okay, who's got the best matchup, and can I sit them? Well. I could, I did, I shouldn't, and we learn, live, and move on. Um, But, yeah, so Kyle Allen being in, here's the positive. The positive on this side is that Kyle Allen and the offensive coordinator for Washington and Ron Rivera, the head coach, have all been together for one whole season before in Carolina. They all picked up and just moved to Washington um, they probably got houses next to each other and stuff, but, um, you know, with Alex Smith being named as the backup, this kind of shows that Dwayne Haskins isn't the guy that they wanted because I mean, Haskins had 300 yards passing, uh, you know, he had a decent game against Washington or against Baltimore. Yeah. They only scored 17 points, but their, their defense allowed like 31, I believe. Um, but regardless, Kyle Allen, not someone you want to roster, but he will affect the players that you currently have. So he's going to affect Antonio Gibson in a positive way, because if you remember correctly, this guy does check down. Okay. So look for his, uh, his usage in the passing game to go up, look for, uh, Terry McLaurin to be targeted because DJ Moore did have a breakout season with Kyle Allen. So it is possible to have a wide receiver with Kyle Allen be very productive. Uh, also, Stephen Gil, uh, Stephon Gilmore with the safety, the shutdown safety for the Pats is positive for COVID. This means he has gone along possibly with teammate Cam Newton. Uh, it's supposed if I'm reading everything correctly, it's a five day 
uh, no symptom and everything that's being said is being said that uh, Cam Newton is asymptomatic. So if he has no symptoms and he gets two negative uh, COVID tests back, it is conceivable that he could be ready for Sunday's game uh, this week. Now, here's the thing. It is not a guarantee. And if you have uh, if you have Cam Newton on your bench and you're thinking about starting him against Denver, I would pivot somewhere else, okay? Because he's not going to be locked in. And this is the thing. We have the Thursday night game with uh, the Bucks and the Bears. If you have, let's say, Cam Newton and Tom Brady as your quarterbacks, go ahead and start Brady. I know I hate saying it too, but you can't take that chance. And the hashtag for today, hashtag be aware. Okay, in this COVID world that we're living in, you've got to be aware of what's going on, what's coming down from the NFL, uh, who's positive, who's not, you know, all this other stuff. Uh, as far as other positives, there were two more Titans players that were positive. And this is the big one, guys. This one could put this game in jeopardy. So if you have Johnu Smith, if you, for whatever reason, <laughs> are rostering and thinking about starting Ryan Tannehill, if you have Corey Davis, if you have uh, Derrick Henry is the big one, uh, if you have any of those Titans players, you might want to pivot away. I know that, and this matchup against Buffalo isn't good, or yeah, isn't good to start with anyway. Uh, so don't worry about missing out on this one. On the flip side of this, if you have Josh Allen, uh, if you have uh, Steph, uh, Stephon Diggs, if you have uh, Devin Singletary, all of those Buffalo players that you would normally start and you would normally say, yeah, I'm good. They're, they're solid. They've been productive for me. That could be a problem, okay? If this game is put in jeopardy, if this, for whatever reason, and we don't know, uh, we need to keep an eye on it. It's Sunday game, so you have some time. It's only Thursday. It's only, uh, I'm on central time, so it is 541 right now. Um, we haven't gotten any updates from the NFL. Uh, nobody said anything, so keep an eye on it. Um, you're also going to want to keep an eye on all the injuries that are coming out. So uh, for the Thursday night game, like I said, I know I said go ahead and start Brady, but it's a short week. He had a really good nuclear performance, uh, five touchdowns last week. Um, Godwin is out for this game. So you might be leaning toward uh, if you have, Mike Evans, you're definitely uh, leaning towards starting him. However, he is dinged up. So if you are out there and you are a Scotty Miller owner, yes, Scotty to hottie or Scotty potty, we're not sure which one we're going to get. Um, but if Godwin and if Godwin's out, which he is, uh, and Evans is dinged up and something happens during the game, um, as it happened to me with Julio. Julio got, got hurt. He got pulled out of that game Monday night. Um, so I lost out on points there. But, and that was in my listener league. Sorry. <laughs> um, I know there's, there might be one of the guys from my, my uh, league of record who's going, wait a minute, I got a Julio. What's going on? Um, so, like I said, if you have Scotty Miller, go ahead put him in. But remember, all Thursday night players, if they are a wide receiver, they belong in the wide receiver spot. If they are a running back, they belong in the running back spot. So that allows you room later on in the week. If you need to pivot for a game, you have that flexibility because you're going to need your flex position open. Okay. So if you have a Monday night player, your Monday night player needs to be in your flex in case something happens 
where you can take that Monday night player and switch them out with a Sunday player if something comes out where that player pops up on the injury list for whatever reason. Um, and we'll talk more about Monday night game uh, on the next episode. Um, today we're talking uh, sit starts. Um, I'm going to go through the entire list uh, today with you guys. So on the uh, as far as the tight ends go for the Bucks, look, OJ Howard is out. Uh, he's dinged up. You still have Cameron Bray, and you still have Rob, Rob Gronkowski. However, please lay off of the position. There are plenty, and I'm going to give you guys a couple of uh, uh, streamer for tight end and my sits of the week for tight end. And if these guys are still available in your league, please go get them. Uh, when I do my start sits, I'll give you guys a little, little heads up. When I sit a player or when I recommend that you sit a player, it's guys that you would normally start, but they have a really bad matchup or they might be dinged up. So I don't want you guys to get into a game and have this player re-aggravate something. Uh, maybe have a bad, they're dealing with a hamstring issue, they're dealing with a knee issue, and there's some question as to whether or not they're even going to play or how much they're going to play. So I want your expectations lowered for these players. But when I give you my starts, these are guys who you might not normally start, and that's what you're looking for. You're looking for that little edge that's going to get you above the competition, okay? On the Chicago side of things, um, yes, you have Nick Foles coming in, wearing the cape, trying to rescue, and uh, it, it sounds weird to say that he's rescuing a 3-1 and one team, but they were 3-0 and oh under Trubisky. They're 0-1 now under Foles, and they get the Bucks on a short week with a really good defense. Uh, so the 0 and to Nick Foles era is on the way. Don't be surprised to see it, okay? Um, if you have Allen Robinson, if you can pivot away in this matchup, do so. Um, if you have Montgomery, if you have David Montgomery as your running back, I would say yes, based on the workload, he is going to get some work in this one. They will probably be down. They'll probably be playing from behind. And normally that's not good for a running back, but, I mean, who else is he going to check down to? And this is Nick Foles. Okay, guys? Um, I know you might be thinking, hey, they got Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham had had a couple of touchdowns in, you know, two weeks ago. Yeah, he did. But then he wound up as the tight end 25 after being the tight end one. So he was tight end 25 for week four. He was tight end one for week three. What you're going to get, we don't know. And those two touchdowns came at the end of the game after Foles had already been put in. So he, it was more of a desperation thing than anything else. So please take into context what you're thinking about. There are plenty of other options out there. This is not a tight end driven matchup. So please lay off of all the tight ends in this game. Um, and I think that will about cover it. Um, let's check real quick, see if I missed anything. I want to leave you guys without proper uh, proper info here. Let's see. So yeah, so we talked about the uh, the Bill O'Brien incident. Apparently, there was some heated uh, discussion with he, him and JJ Watt. Um, There's also talk of the Saints and the uh, the Indianapolis Colts. So that's the Monday night game. They're, they were talking about moving that to Indy because of the storm that's coming. Um, 
so something to keep an eye on. Uh, a little news of a personal note because uh, Lamar Jackson is my guy. Uh, Lamar Jackson was held out of practice uh, due to a knee injury. So let's go ahead and uh, keep an eye on that one throughout the week. And that looks like about it, guys. So, yeah, the Lamar Jackson thing. If you are a Lamar Jackson owner, as I am, you're going to want to keep an eye on this news. And if you need to pivot, make sure that you have an adequate backup uh, with Matthew Stafford on a buy this week. That's going to take away one of your possible uh, free agent acquisitions that you can make this week. So let's get into start sit for week five, guys. So at quarterback position, we're looking at Gardner Minshew. And I know, I know, the one week that I actually put him on the list, he did absolutely horrible, but it's Houston. Uh, their defense has not been good. They're in, in that rebuild, or not rebuild, but they're in that, uh, that period of time where they're – uh, they're going from one that transition. That's the word I'm looking for. They're going through that transition now, where they're they're leaving the Bill O'Brien era. They're moving into Romeo Cromel in the in the temporary uh, future. So there might be some kind. Of, there there might be that pickup, but there's also might be that you know we don't know what we are right now. So in that confusion. Go ahead. If Deshaun has an absolutely blow up game, uh, they're going to be playing from behind in Jacksonville. So Minshew will have to throw the ball. Uh, and we all know that he can run, uh, that he does have uh, James Robinson. They likes to check down to. So this is, this is a win-win on, on both sides. Uh, also Justin Herbert against new Orleans on Monday night. If you're, I'm sorry, uh, Justin, Justin Herbert, let's see, because uh, it was New Orleans and Indy, that is not the team that I'm thinking of. Okay, guys. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, so Indianapolis is at Cleveland. That's why they're moving the, the New Orleans game to Indianapolis because they would have the availability to play there. Sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, so Herbert is playing <laughs> against the, the Saints. Kind of threw me for a loop. Sorry, guys. But, yeah, Justin Herbert against New Orleans. Look, Herbert is – a good quarterback. Okay, if you need to start someone, you've seen that he can produce uh, going against New Orleans. Could be blown out. Michael Thomas is supposed to be back in this game. Uh, so good news for Michael Thomas owners. Also, I got a bonus here for you. Teddy Bridgewater, Teddy B against Atlanta. Okay, now we saw Carolina last week. They looked good. Uh, Teddy B, look, we knew that Teddy could ball when he was in New Orleans. We saw what he could do in Minnesota uh, a few years back. He's just gotten better. He just has an opportunity to prove it now in, uh, in Carolina. So that said, I would go ahead and if you need to pivot to somebody, you can go ahead and pivot to Teddy B. My last start of the week at quarterback, and normally I'm only going to give you guys three. I'm giving you guys a bonus fourth one this week. Fitzpatrick versus Seattle. Yes, I love this matchup uh, simply because it's Seattle, guys, and it's the it's Fitz magic. I mean, come on, the beard. I don't have it. You know, I got the I got the little goatee going on, but the beard is 
killer. The beard is beast, okay? Uh, this is where he gets this, his magic from. His fist magic comes from his facial hair. Um, so going against Seattle, this is a great matchup for Fitzpatrick. Um, guys that I want to sit this week at quarterback, Tom Brady versus Chicago. I now gave you guys him as a, as a possible uh, pivot, but I don't like this matchup on a short week for Tom Brady. I mean, he doesn't, he's not going to recover the way he used to. Uh, Tannehill versus Buffalo. This game might not even happen. So if you have Tannehill, I would definitely sit him. Uh, also, Joe Burrow against the Ravens, okay? I know Burrow has looked good. He's been putting up really good numbers, but this is against the Ravens, and I don't know if you want to risk that at this point in time. This is a divisional matchup. It's going to be a rough game. There's going to be a lot riding on this game for Buffalo. Or, I'm sorry, for, uh, for Baltimore. I'm getting my bees mixed up here, talking about them too close together. Um so that's a, that's a cautionary uh, word here from the Dean about Joe Burrow, guys. Uh, at running back, David Johnson, and this is my Bill O'Brien uh, factor coming in here. David Johnson should be used according to how he should be used. Uh, Romeo Cremel, I believe, will take David Johnson and make him extremely valuable in fantasy. This is against Jacksonville, so, you know, I like it. Antonio Gibson, I'm, thing, I'm happy I can actually put Antonio Gibson in this. Uh, he had a, a stellar week last week. And with Kyle Allen, who basically he had the best running back last year that you could possibly have in Christian McCaffrey. Check down to him a lot. I think Antonio Gibson kind of can fit in that mold against the Rams. Uh He's going to be under pressure a lot, and he's going to need to get the ball out early. Who better to get it out to than Antonio Gibson? Uh, I do have a, a streamer for you. Uh, we'll talk about in a little in a bit that also goes along this line. James Conner coming back off of the unexpected buy due to the fact that the Steelers had the Titans on their schedule, and they had to have that game forced into a bye because of the COVID test coming back positive for the Titans. But James Conner against the Eagles. Look, this Eagles team is horrid on both sides of the ball. If you have a Steeler this week, go ahead, start them. It, it's all systems go for that game. Sits of the week. You guys might not like this one. I would love it just for just for simple fact that I got burned by this guy last week. Joe Mixon going against Baltimore. Look, Joe Mixon's rest of schedule looks a little rough. He's got Baltimore twice. He's got Pittsburgh uh, twice, if I'm not mistaken. It's just a rough stretch for Joe Mixon. Uh, Josh Jacobs versus KC. Uh, we, you know, I don't know what to make of Josh Jacobs. He's kind of been a little disappointing. Uh, he's got had his bright spots, but against a good KC defense, I'm not sure about that. Uh, Melvin Gordon versus the Patriots. Look, if there's anybody that's going to single out someone, it is Bill Belichick. And Melvin Gordon has been the is the bright spot on this Denver offense. They're down to their third string quarterback in Brett Rippon. I think that Belichick will make them lean on the pass because they got Tim Patrick. Who's Tim Patrick? Okay, this is what all everyone was saying last week when he popped up with over 100 yards and a couple of touchdowns. So Tim Patrick and Brett Rippon, I think that Belichick will be like, hey, you guys did it once. Let's see if you can do it again. Um, I do like the uh, the Brett Rippon matchup with the Pats because Stephen Gil uh, Stephon Gilmore is not going to be available. Uh, they are going to be going with uh, Jason Stedham. Uh, and Chet, if you're watching, go ahead and correct me down at the bottom. And what guys, while you're down there uh, correcting my pronouncement or yeah, my uh, pronounce pronunciation of the new 
quarterback for the New England Patriots. Go ahead, subscribe, like, and share for me while you're down there. And remember that Start Sets is brought to you by Keller's Bakery at 627 Lafayette Street off the Youngsville Highway. If you're down there, go grab you a dozen donuts, grab you a cake, grab you some, uh, some pies, and tell them that the Dean sent you, get you two free cookies, all right? Let me know how they are down the bottom. So, Melvin Gordon with the Pats on my sit list. Yes, he's been stellar, but I think that the Belichick is going to concentrate on shutting down the run and forcing Brett Rippon to beat them. Wide receivers. Also, coming back off of the, the force by Juju against Philly. Look, like I said, if you have a Steeler in this game, go ahead, start him. Deontay Johnson. Uh, James Conner, Big Ben, Juju, all these guys, fire them up. Uh, Darius Slayton, you said, wh what, Dean? You just said to start a giant? Look who they're playing. They're playing Dallas. Okay. Dallas's defense couldn't hold a bucket of water if you glued it to their hands. Okay. These guys have been absolutely horrid in defense. They allowed the Browns to score 49 points. Even Washington didn't let the Browns score 49 points, okay? Come on, guys. So, that said, going to my former guy who I actually traded away to get Joe Mixon. Got him. And uh, so, DJ Shark versus Houston. Loving this matchup uh, simply because I like the Min I like the Minshew magic, um, and he's going to have to throw to somebody. Welcome back, DJ Shark. He's also got uh, LaVisca Chenault in this one. Sorry, guys. Got a little uh, little news from from the missus. All right, so my sits of the week. Last week, guys, this guy put up that much. Look, myself and Calvin Ridley had exactly the same numbers in fantasy football, probably first time ever. You're like, wait a minute, Dean, you didn't play? Apparently, neither did Calvin Ridley, okay? Go ahead and ask my boy D Money, who had him in his starting lineup, gave him a big old goose egg. And for Calvin Ridley to get a goose egg in the matchup that he had last week, it wasn't like he was going up against a shutdown corner. He was not going up against anyone. It wasn't Marshawn Lattimore. It wasn't Stephen Gilmore. None of these guys. So what is going on with Calvin Ridley? Is he hurt? Do we not know about it? Was he dealing with something? We're not sure. So Going up, and I hate to say, you know, going up against Carolina that you need to sit him, but you might need to sit him. Uh, Tyler Boyd going up against Baltimore. Look, if anybody's going to get manned up with their best coverage corner, it's going to be Tyler Boyd. It's not going to be A.J. Green. He hasn't shown anything. Tyler Boyd's been the man. So that does mean that T. Higgins could be the next up, next man up for this Cincinnati offense for uh, Joe Burrow to target against the Ravens. Now, the next, the last guy I'm talking about on the set, big, big day last week, but he was going up against the Cowboys. This week, he's going up against probably the number one or number two best defense in the league against Indianapolis. I'm talking about OBJ, Odell Beckham Jr. Look, this guy went off twice this, this year. So half the year, he's been awesome. Half the year, he's been crap. This week, look for the crap to come back, okay? Week one, nothing. Week two, stellar. Week three, nothing. Week four, stellar. 
Do you see a pattern? So, OBJ against Indy. If you can pivot away from them, please do so. Sit, or starts of the week at tight end. Evan Ingram. Yes, Evan Ingram because it's against Dallas. They got to throw the ball somewhere. I think Evan Ingram has that one or two games. This is one of those games that he has an opportunity to have. The other one's probably going to be against Dallas next time. Um, and I know this next guy, he kind of disappointed a little bit. And he is one of the few Baltimore or uh, Cincinnati players that I'm putting on a start list. I'm saying Drew Sample. You've seen that connection with Joe Burrow previously in the uh, past couple of weeks. Uh, he does have a connection with Joe Burrow. He's also got another injured tight end that they're dealing with. So he's pretty much the guy. They're going to have to dump the ball off early and try to get out of Burrow's hands. So what better way than the tight end? think that Drew Sample has a big game here. Uh, Dan Arnold. And this is my first reference and my actually only reference because if you are playing the J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 if you have an Arizona Cardinal on your roster, please start them. Uh, Dan Arnold is a guy who kind of slips through the cracks because you don't you kind of forget about him. He hasn't had that big of a year, but I think this could be a really good game for him. Uh, my sits of the week at tight end, John New Smith, because it's against Buffalo, also for the fact that this game might not happen. So I don't want you guys to go out there and start a Tennessee Titan and not be able to have the game. Tyler Higby versus Washington. Now, here's the thing. I'm not saying sit Tyler Higby against Washington because Washington's some stellar defense because they're not. Uh, I'm saying sit him because his snap count has gone down and Gerald Everett is back in. So if you want to play the game of who's going to be this week, is it going to be Everett? Is it going to be Higby? Is it going to be Everett? Is it going to be Higby? Is it going to be both of them? You don't know. So if you want to not have that problem and not have that heartache, then take Tyler Higby, put him on your bench. The next guy kind of pains me to say, Mo Ali Cox. You guys know I have been advocating for you to roster this guy. Uh, his count, snap count has gone down, and this is against Cleveland. Uh, so I like the matchup, but I think that this game is going to get out of hand early. I think that Indianapolis is going to be playing ahead, which means they're going to be running out the clock, which means that Jonathan Taylor will be in your starting lineup against Cleveland. Okay. Um, so those are my set starts of the week. Two notes. Any Arizona Cardinal against the Jets, as I said, please start them. Any Jacksonville player against Houston, go ahead and start them. If you have a Houston player going against Jacksonville, please start them. Okay. Um, my streamer of the week, I'm putting Teddy B as my start, as my streamer of the week against Atlanta. If you are desperate and you need help, if you have Aaron Rodgers, or for whatever reason, you have Maya Stafford as your starting quarterback, you need to have a pivot option. Atlanta has been horrid on defense. So please go ahead and start Teddy B. Uh, tight end. Logan Thomas. I'm not, I'm not going to give you guys a wide receiver or a running back streamer because you guys should have enough depth on your bench where you can go ahead and reach and pull somebody up. Okay, guys. Uh, if you do need help with that, down bottom, leave a comment and let me know what your, uh, what your problem is this week, what your quandary is. Um, to borrow a phrase from Demolition Man, what is your boggle? What's your boggle? So, if you have a boggle down the bottom, leave your boggle and uh, we'll, we'll answer that in rapid time. Okay. Uh, also, you can find me on Twitter at Fantasy Dean 20 if you have any questions there as well. Okay, guys. Uh, but yeah, Logan Thomas for tight end versus the Rams. Look, if 
Kyle Allen's coming in. It's against the Rams. Aaron Donald is on the other side of the ball. He's going to be pressuring Kyle Allen all day long. And what better way to help a quarterback in a new position or in, in, on a new team along than with a quality tight end? I'm not saying that he's the best tight end out there, but if you have to stream a tight end, you're basically throwing a lifeline out there and going, please, God, someone help me. So Logan Thomas could be your answer to prayer this week. Uh, my kicker, and I normally don't don't give you guys this, Goskowski. I know it's with Tennessee, but if you have to steer away from uh, Tennessee, and let me just check, double check this because I want to make sure I get this guy's name right. You can go ahead and go with uh, yeah, Daniel Carson. He is the kicker for the Las Vegas Raiders on the year. He's got 45 points, guys. Randy Bullock from the, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals is number one with 52. So if you're looking for a good, uh, a good streaming option, provided this game happens, Goskowski's your guy. If not, go ahead with Carlson. Um, and here's, here's what I do as far as kickers. I normally don't roster one particular kicker the entire year unless they've been doing really, really well for me. Um, and even then, sometimes I'll go ahead and ditch them for a better matchup. Here's how I do my matchups for kickers. I look at, are they playing a really good defense and do they have the ability to get in the red zone or at least get into field goal range? If they have the ability to get in field goal range, like Tennessee does, Tennessee has the ability with Derrick Henry to drive the ball down, but they might stall and not get the touchdown. That's awesome for your kicker, okay? Sucks for, for your running back, quarterback, wide receiver, tight end. Sucks for everybody else on your squad except your kicker. If you have a kicker who is on either a very potent offense – like, I don't know, like New Orleans with Will Lutz. Okay, we know that they're going to get down there. We know they're going to score a ton of points. And when it gets down to it, if they need a 50-yard field goal to win it, you know that Lutz can come through. But if they're not on a potent offense, then they need to be on an offense that's adequate enough to get down there and stall. Tennessee is perfect. Okay, so Guskowski is a really good – Pick up this week. Defense. The Bucks versus Chicago. I think that the Bucks can go ahead and take this game. And Nick Foles is going to throw interceptions. He's going to turn the ball over. And they're going to have to try to come back at the end and win this thing. Okay. Um, so, yes, they can pick on Nick Foles. It's a short week for both teams. Go ahead and get you some points for the Bucks, okay? Remember, my waiver wire pickups of the week, Justin Herbert, Derek Carr, uh, running back, Giovanni Bernard, because you want, if something happens with Joe Mixon, you want that on your bench. Damon Harris, 16 rushing attempts, 100 yards, and no Cam Newton possibly again this week does lend itself very well to Damon Harris having an adequate very serviceable week if you were looking for uh, run, uh, running back help. If you're looking at Tim Patrick or Traquan Smith, please make sure that you check Cortland Sutton's health going into this game. Michael Thomas is supposed to be back. So look for Traquan Smith's numbers to drop significantly. Okay, guys. So that set starts. That's a little news for you guys. We got Thursday night football tonight. Bucks, Bears, make your lineup adjustments accordingly. Remember, guys, be aware, trust your gut, and always tune in to Fantasy Football Academy 2020 with me, the Dean. We'll see you guys next time. If you were in the Louisiana area, please, batten down the hatches. Delta's coming. Storm's on the way. Uh, wish you guys well. and. Uh, 
We will see you next time on Fantasy Football Academy 2020.